already in here. Oh, problem nose. Oh, a cold start. is even the natural headlights do a very good job of projecting light I know right that's their job anyways but these ones are exceptionally good at it <clears throat> I can actually see in front of me and I think that's one of the nicer things about owning a truck is that you can actually see in front of you when you drive I know some sports cars headlights aren't the best uh, and that's you know if you get an older one in some cases newer ones but a lot of the newer ones are really good about it there's a truck it's a gmc right next to me i think it's the diesel i'm not sure oh it's actually a uh, yukon a gmc yukon and it's pulling oh that, that's a denali wow it's pulling a trailer i think they felt pretty cool it's you seeing two gmc's drive next to each other it's a different experience because you know chevy owners you know, they'll park next to Chevy owners, and that's that's cool and whatnot. You see two Chevys, that's cool. But I think when you see two GMC owners next to each other, that's even cooler. You guys hear that engine? <laughs> uh, it sounds beautiful. It sounds absolutely beautiful. That L96. Oh, oh man. Oh, there's, a, there's a truck in there. I don't know, he, uh, he seems to be creeping up on us a little bit. We'll see what he wants. I'm pretty sure that's a LB7 Duramax. Oh, crap, that's a cop. Life update, that was not a cop. However, that was a guy with a light bar on a headache rack that made it look like a cop truck. So that was, that was pretty awkward. We weren't speeding or anything, but I did gun it and give it a little bit of power over the bridge back there, so, you know, <laughs> I did turn into a uh, McDonald's shortly thereafter. I think the coolest thing is the uh, Camaraderie, though. There's a 3500 HD next to me, and uh, it's actually the same body style as mine. Uh, is this the Germans? Yeah, this is gonna roll cool on me for sure. That's a huge exhaust too. Wow, I mean, yeah, let me get that. Let me show you guys what I'm talking about. That's one big baby. I know you guys are hearing that uh, rattling around. That's two things. I have a tool chest in the back. I also have the headache rack, and it is the loudest headache rack in existence, I'm sure. I think the uh, more prominent of the two rattling sounds is the toolbox, however. It's not going anywhere, it's just very loud and pretty annoying, if you ask me. I think he's going to roll coal onto the highway up here. I know I would if I had a diesel. But your boy cheaped out. Well, kind of. Sure, I'll go over the price of everything in a future video. Because this truck was definitely not cheap. <laughs> I mean, it was fairly cheap. It was the cheapest one I could get in my budget with the miles and everything. But still, it's not cheap. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's cheap and it's affordable, but it's not cheap. <laughs> if that makes any sense. It's as cheap as a full-size truck is going to get. <sighs> really just waiting on this light to turn green. Sick Camaro. Alright, here we go. It's hard to tell if he's a diesel or not. I think he might be. That's a good app. He's 
He's got a 3500 HD LTZ 4x4 with a Z71 uh, off-road performance package. Sounds insane. It's gonna be so loud without the uh, muffler too. Like I said, the muffler's 60 or 70 pounds. It's it's huge. Reminds me of a uh, gas barrel. And let's get on the highway so you guys can actually hear what it sounds like at highway speeds. We're doing around 50 on this access road right now. Uh, let me slow down on the speed limit. I think the speed limit might be a 45. Ah, it might be 50, yeah. It's one of those. In Texas, you kind of got a five mile per hour grace period. However, I do know this highway right here is definitely a 65. So we will be getting onto it. We're doing 47 right there in the sweet spot in the middle. And 47, hitting it. 50, 52, 55, 60. like that. Oh, that feels good. The engine just keeps pulling and pulling and pulling and pulling and it, <laughs> you know, all the way through 70 miles per hour. It is beautiful. Imagine what a supercharged version of this would be. Absolutely nuts. That's right. It would be absolutely nuts. I haven't done a nighttime driving video in a very long time, mainly because I haven't had a car to go on a nighttime drive in, and I'm super excited to do the M3's nighttime drive video, uh, mainly because you know you, I've spent the last better half of the year building that car, and it's nighttime drive video should be coming up here in a couple of months, uh, depending on how things go. Yeah, the speed limit's 65, we're doing uh, 61. Yeah, we're doing 61. <sighs> Slow down, you're already in Texas, drive friendly, the Texas way, that is not true. Texans are like some of the worst drivers. It's, it's so funny. I think Texas and California would get along as far as driving goes. Everybody's a crazy driver here, which when you go to more mellow states where people follow the rules and regulations of the road, it's so funny because, you know, <laughs> they look at you like you're, you're the worst person alive when you don't. And, I mean, almost every highway in Texas is 75 miles per hour. It's rarely actually even 60 miles per hour. So almost all of them are above 75. So when you get to a place that isn't, uh, it, it sucks because I was in Washington uh, last week. And, uh, you know, all the, all the roads there are, are 60 or barely even you know 60 some or 55 and 50 on highways so it's, it's quite the quite the change behold the fastest car in the world my 2013 dodge avenger rt there's this facebook group called that it's a tag group but it's so funny because avenger rt owners uh, are, are pretty funny that's an avenger rt in front of us the road noise in the Sierra is not too bad. You know, I've definitely been in louder uh, trucks and louder cars. I think most of this noise is actually due to the tires and it has nothing to do with the truck itself. Uh, one thing I did note the other day is that you can be on the highway with the windows down and still have a conversation with someone. Uh, I did that with my buddy Jonathan. We were both on the highway in the truck and we were both able to carry on a really good conversation without having to feel like we were yelling or anything which it's super similar to when you're in a convertible some convertibles with the top down you can still have a pretty nice conversation and not have to worry about it so we're getting off of this exit and uh, whipping it around hopefully 
hopefully the video quality isn't horrible. I really like just driving and, and talking to you guys. You know, it feels like a little therapy session, if you will, uh, without someone asking you weird questions about your life. <sighs> Ready to cut this left turn. Now there's a Ram 2500 Cummins in front of me. There you go, just gotta go. It's always funny when the Cummins drivers pull up next to you, expecting you to hit it. And you don't, because you're probably going to get dusted anyways. Also, I don't really partake in road racing, because it's unsafe and dangerous. And it's very irresponsible. So, you know, only race on closed courses as professional drivers or on a track. You know, racing's for a track, it's not for, it's not for the road. Although I do hope that the M3 ends up being road legal, because that would be pretty cool. <laughs> had the opportunity to try out the four-wheel drive on this track yet but I'm pretty excited because that opportunity is coming to a video here soon and I've had the opportunity to go a few times and I've been very very careful but I'm just gonna hit it <laughs> truck before. I mean, my 2004 Chevy Silverado 2500 HD uh, truck, that was a fairly quick truck. You know, it was, it was quick for its time period, you know, and trucks aren't supposed to be quick. I get it. They're meant to tow and haul and tow people around, but it also does feel good to go quick on an empty load when you don't have anything in the back of the pickup truck and you are trying to merge or you are trying to change lanes or you are trying to get up to speed. That's when it's okay to kind of put your foot down on the gas pedal a little bit and have some fun on turns like that. And I'm sure in future maneuvers on the road, I'll have a lot of fun doing that. I don't buy a truck thinking it'll be the fastest thing in the world. I know there's people who build diesel race trucks and those are cool. But I think uh, I think an empty loaded, like no load on a pickup truck with a with a big V8, that could be gobs of fun too. And it's fun in the vehicle that it's in, you know? That's why I'm really excited about the M3, because that is gonna be really fun when there's you know no occupants other than myself and then that turbo spooling at 4,500 RPM and we're just hitting it. Oh, that's gonna be so beautiful. Eh, the gear shifts and all of it, I, I can't wait. And it's just about our time for the light. There we go. And the 6L90E does a pretty good job of shifting in this truck. Um, I know a lot of people blow the transmissions in these trucks quite often, but the 6L90E that I have seems to be one of the good ones, you know, knock on wood, that it doesn't become problematic in the future. I was looking at the service records and this truck's been very well maintained. It'll be up for a transmission fluid change here in about uh, 12,000 miles. So we'll get a better view on how the transmission's doing and more insight when that service comes up. This is probably the best nighttime visibility experience I've had in a vehicle. I've driven all sorts of vehicles too. You know, I've driven my 2009 Mitsubishi Lancer that I used to have. Uh, then I had a 2004 Mitsubishi Lancer. I had a 2002 Toyota Celica GTS. The 2016 Hyundai Genesis 3.8. Uh, the 2004 Chevy Silverado, my 1977 Ford Bronco Axle to Ranger, uh, to name a few vehicles. And this is the best experience I've had with visibility. I don't have to worry about where anything's at because I know where everything's at. My, my mirrors are accurate. 
my lights project very well and I know where I'm going and that alone just makes the driving experience 100% better I don't have to worry about road conditions for the most part this is a truck you know I don't have to worry if another car is going to hit and potentially kill me because it's a truck you know it's a big truck uh, I don't have to worry about any of that in the in the vehicle and that alone is super big I know I'm not trying to say that this truck is indestructible or indestructible if you will but what I am saying is a lot of worries that people generally have while driving at night I don't face and I think that that's pretty cool you know but I am a sports car owner and driving sports cars the constant thought is well what if I get in an accident will I be okay and will I make it home to my family can I even drive this in the snow uh, what will happen if it's too rainy outside and I need to go home or I need to get back from work or I need to go to work well those those worries are no longer in my head like they they were previously you know what uh, I used to wonder if reliability was going to be an issue or if safety was going to be an issue or any of that was going to be an issue and now <coughs> I can just drive you know Chevy trucks are super reliable GM trucks I should say this is a GMC Sierra I gotta stop calling it a Chevy I, I think it's a Chevy in my head but I know deep down in my heart that it's not it's a GMC actually not deep down in my heart I also know just regularly it's just the GMC you know but yeah <clears throat> I'll show you guys what the brights look like they're super bright alright so this is the truck with the regular headlights on and those are the brights they, they, those shine easily 250 meters in front of me so do the regular headlights they project pretty far too I, I'd say they project a good 150 meters ish